Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be dealing with a machine problem. Uh, it's more like a frame problem because the majority of the problem is going to be involving, you know, these members here, here, and here. But there is a pulley involved, so it does classify as a machine problem. So it will teach us the basics of what we need to know for it. But I picked this problem mainly because I feel like frames are more of an important subject to cover. So, for pulleys, let me just get this out of the way quickly. Uh, for pulleys with continuous cables, a constant tension is going to act through the length of this cable, right? So you see there's a 300 pound force and it's evenly being pulled through this entire system because this pulley is frictionless and allowing that to happen, right? However, the direction that the T or the tension acts in your system depends on the section you isolate for your free body diagram. And that's going to make a whole lot of sense when we start analyzing this problem. But let's read the problem and see what we're actually dealing with, okay? So determine the horizontal and vertical components of the force at C, which members ABC exerts on member CEF. So pretty much this is just asking what are the reaction forces at the shear connection or the pin that we discussed in a previous video that you can look at here at C, all right? So we're looking for CY and CX. So let's get this tension part out of the way and analyze this uh, pulley. Okay, so now that we have the pulley system isolated on its own, we can see that there's a tension created in this rope, all right? Because this rope is connected to a member elsewhere and is being pulled towards that member, so we have a tension being created there. We also have a tension being created on the bottom here by this 300 pound external force. It's pulling down on that rope, so we can imagine that the tension is pulling downwards, right? And we know, based on what we said previously, that a constant tension acts throughout the entire length of this rope. So if we only have one force applied to the rope, that means that T must equal 300 pounds. And similar to a pin, we also have reactions dy and dx. We can consider this pulley as a pin in the way that it gets its support reactions. We have a shear connection where it is transferring its load from the rope into that member, right? So we know to keep this system in equilibrium that dx is going to have to equal 300 pounds. Why? Because tension is also 300 pounds and it's going to be the equal and opposite direction. Okay. And similarly, dy is going to equal 300 pounds as well. So now where do we go from here? We're going to have to pick member BED. But why am I picking this member? Why is this my first choice? Well, first of all, we know we have the reactions at dx and dy, but we also need cx and cy at the end of this problem, okay? So we either need to find the reactions at b or e first, because the reactions at the pins will be transferred equally and oppositely to the connected members, right? So my thinking is let's solve bed first so that we tackle both b and e simultaneously, okay? So let's take a look at this member and see what it has to offer. So now that we're looking at this member, we can see that we have the reactions at B and the reactions at E, okay? But we also have the equal and opposite dy and dx that we solved for previously. So using our equilibrium equations, we have separated this member in order to use our three equations that we have. And my first instinct is to use the summation of moment at B is equal to zero. Why is that? It's going to remove two forces right off the rip because these two forces are not going to create any moment at point B along with this EX and DX in addition to it. So we only have EY and DY to deal with. We have DY solved for, so let's go ahead and solve for EY. EY, based on our convention, right, is going to be in the upwards direction going counterclockwise, meaning it's positive. It's gonna be three feet away from that point B and then we also have the dy acting in the opposite direction, which is 300, and then that is multiplied by 6, right? Bringing this over, we have 300 times 6 divided by 3, which is going to equal 600 pounds. And now we can simply solve for other reactions in this problem as well. Which one? By. If we take Fy and we notice that By is the only Y component left to solve for, so we can easily take By, the negative, since it's going downwards. Let's remember that convention here. And then we also have Ey solved for and Dy solved for as well. 
where we bring this over, we know by is equal to 300 pounds. And when we take summation of forces at x, we notice we still have two x components that we still need to solve for, ex and bx. So I'm just going to leave this as an open-ended equation, plus bx plus ex minus the dx, which we solve for, which is 300. And we're going to keep this equation in mind and solve for it later. But what member am I going to move to now? Am I going to pick ABC or am I going to pick CEF to solve for? Well, I'm going to go for CEF. Why is that? Because I know there's one reaction at this roller, FY. But at the pin, we're going to have AY and we're also going to have AX. So that's why I'm going to pick CEF first to solve for. Let's clean this problem up and see what we're working with in CEF. Okay, so let's do a quick run through of what we're looking at in CEF. We have EY and EX acting equally and oppositely based on the rule of the pin, right? We have assumed a direction in BED, so it's going to be equal and opposite in CEF. We have the tension, which is now pulling in the opposite direction that we assumed when we analyzed the pulleys FBD. And this is because we have a new reference frame, okay? This pulley is pulling down like that when we're looking from this point of reference. So because of this free body diagram we assumed, we have a new way to assume that tension. And it's going to be pulling away from that member, okay? It's also one foot away from where E is because we have a one foot radius for that pulley. And then we have the reactions at uh, F, which is just the one for the roller, and then the two for C, Y, and C, X. So what's my assumption? What am I going to do here? I'm going to first take the moment at C. Based on a similar principle we used before, we're trying to eliminate as many members as possible or reactions as possible. So this is going to take out CY, CX, EY, and FY, only leaving us with T and EX. So we can solve for EX here, right? So when we do that, we are left with a 300, which is three feet away. Remember, we solved for tension before. It is 300, going to create a counterclockwise force or motion around that C point. And then it's three feet away because four minus one is three. Then we have EX acting in the opposite direction, and that is gonna be times four. It is four feet away from that point we're looking at. So that means EX solved for is going to be 225 pounds. But wait, we remember we have this equation here. So we'd actually go ahead and solve for BX now. Plugging that into our equation down here, using equation one, we are gonna be left with BX is equal to 75 pounds. And this is from equation one, okay? What do we do next? Now we can take a look at F at X or F at Y, but let's start with F at X first. And what do we have to look at? We have the CX force first going negatively based on our convention, right? And then we also have the tension force, which is 300 pounds. We have the EX, which we solved for, which is going to be negative 225 pounds. And then that's all the X forces. So that leaves us with CX equal to 75 pounds. And then lastly, we can take a look at FY to solve another equation, possibly, which is FY plus CY minus 600 from that EY component. We may have to come back to this to solve for FY, but we'll take a look and see if we actually need it later. But we still need CX and we can't solve it here so that leaves us with our last member, ABC, to solve for, to try and find that last reaction. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so now that we're looking at our last member, we can see a lot of reactions that may seem like we can't solve, but we actually have a lot of these solved for already, right? We have BY, we have BX, and we have CX. So that leaves us with CY, AY, and AX. But what can we do to get rid of AY and AX? We can take the moment at A to completely eliminate those reactions, to finally solve our problem. So what do we have here? We have 300 for which force? The BY. And that is going to be three feet away. Now, we know that this is three feet away just based on the principles of this triangle, right? So if this eight feet, okay, has a base of six feet, if we take four feet as the new height, that means this base has to be divided by two. So it's going to be three feet, okay? 
So that's the first reaction to solve for. Then we have the BX component to solve for as well. That is going to be positive based on point A. And that is going to be four feet away. Then we also have the other reaction we solve for, which is a CX going the opposite direction, meaning it's negative and given eight because it's eight feet away from that point. And lastly, we have the CY, which is creating a clockwise movement, meaning it is also negative, and that is going to be six feet away, the total distance. Solving for CY, we are finally left with 100 pounds, giving us our final answer of CY equal to 100 pounds and CX equal to 75 pounds. That's it. Good problem to understand the concept of pins. Uh, remembering, you know, when you're transferring over from one member to the other, it's going to be equal and opposite. And it also gives you a brief idea on what pulleys do and how they act inside of different free body systems. Okay. So I hope this helped. Uh, please let me know. And I hope you enjoyed.